a woman came to the FBI in her late 20s saying, and she's been estranged from her, her biological dad for 20 years, and said, I think my dad's a serial killer, and I have all this information. And we said, whoa, and she really lists some information. One of it had to do with a little boy with blonde hair in her basement that her father killed, because the father would do all this nefarious stuff in the basement, chaining women to walls and, and, and mutilating them. And there was a little boy, and, uh, and we're about what year? 1971. Okay, appreciate that. We do some research. We get the New York State Police involved. I'm in New York City now. I'm a regular street agent. I'm not a profiler yet. And uh, lo and behold, the, guy, the father of hers, who's still alive, was not only alive living in the area when this little boy disappeared, mm -hmm. he was actually on one of the search teams. Uh, and we both know, and many people know, that uh, uh, criminals, serial offenders, will sometimes inject themselves into an investigation, either by a phone call, emails, or actually showing up at crime scenes. So this guy really became a, a good suspect, and um, we wanted to interview the family of the missing boy. And this was, to this day, one of the toughest interviews I ever did. It was myself and a state trooper out of New York. We knocked on this, uh, we, we set it up in advance, of course, upstate New York knocked on their door, they knew we were coming, they had their entire dining room table laid out and with the, with the leaves in it and extended with all different documents from their son's case who disappeared over 20 years prior to that at a family gathering in a state park in New York. And uh, they showed us this book, this map, this chart on the wall, these names, these family members, everything, pictures of this, that, the other. There's one book they didn't really point, point to and I said, what's this book here? I said, oh, um, they're the psychics we've hired over the years. You've hired? Yeah, they would call us uh, because it's such big news, and they find out our information, where we live, whatever. And yeah, we paid them because we're so desperate to get our son back. So uh, their son disappeared, never found, never um, uh, any, any signs of him. The most recent psychic claimed he was kidnapped in the early 70s by a band of hippies and living in a commune in Northern California. So they paid other people to go out and look for all the communes in uh, Northern California. Nothing ever came of it. So uh, the case went in different directions. I actually went undercover as a limo driver. I put the daughter in the back seat of the stretch limo. We picked up her father. After all these years, she was wired, the limo was wired, and we got all kinds of interesting conversations between father and daughter in which he never denied killing these people. Um, he knew about the young boy. He went on the search for the young boy. The case kind of went in a certain direction. There was no arrest made, but it turns out that um, because of the, 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 the media found out about this case because we dug up a lake where the bodies were supposedly dumped, and we can talk about that part later. Mm -hmm. But a lot of news went out about a little missing boy, and the case kind of went away. No arrest, no resolving. It may have been a case of where the woman was sort of uh, had these psychological issues planted into her head by her psychologist. But about two weeks after the case closed down, but some media coverage on it, digging up this lake, et cetera, the little boy who went missing from a state park, uh, the state police got a phone call, and it was a guy said, look, I'm a former uh, military member. Two of us back in New York City, we took off uh, one day to go hunting. We went farther away than we were supposed to go from our ship. They were in the Navy. We did some hunting. I walked this long trail, the same state park where this little boy was. I walked back. I saw the skeletal remains of a, of a young child, oh. no more than six years of age. But I was so afraid. I told my buddy, uh, I was so, we were so afraid we'd get court-martialed for being like 50 miles out of the zone they were supposed to be in that they never told anyone. 20 plus years later, they made a phone call, told us this information. The state police walked them back to the trail where they were, and they couldn't, we never could find the bones because of flooding and erosion that took place. But they convinced the, the, at the end of the story, everyone is convinced they saw that little, those little boy's bones. And for the first time, even though the FBI state police investigation of the father being a serial killer didn't go exactly where we wanted, we still have some questions about that. But we think, if nothing else, we've, for the parents' sake, we gave them closure. And we identified uh, 
that in fact these sailors who have pristine reputations never got in trouble for anything else. They just went for one day, they went about 10 or maybe 30 miles farther out of the little zone they're supposed to be in. But they were swore up and down. They, they confirmed with each other what they saw. And uh, we felt for sure it was like a mile away from when the boy disappeared. They didn't know that in advance, um, that we in fact uh, contacted the parents again and gave them the closure that look, bad news is your son is dead. The, there's no good news. The, the related news is in fact, he died a natural death and uh, there's no indication of any kidnapping or foul play. And we didn't say it this way, but the strong intimation was forget the psychics. 